Hello and welcome to CVAT Academy, your go-to training hub for mastering data annotation with CVAT. In this video, we will walk you through a simple skeleton annotation project. We'll explain how to annotate different body parts and then group them all together for a single object. Let's go! Let's start by opening the guide to review the instructions. According to the guidelines, we need to annotate two types of figures, bounding boxes and skeletons. The bounding box will define the person's overall shape, while the skeleton points will mark specific body parts according to the provided scheme. There are a few key requirements for annotation. The bounding box should be precise without cutting off body parts or leaving gaps. Skeleton points must be placed at the center of each body part, meaning they should not be misaligned. Additionally, only visible body parts should be annotated. If a part is blocked by another person, an object, or cropped by the frame, those points should be skipped. Lastly, the bounding box and skeleton must be grouped together to keep all annotations for one person linked. Now, let's close the instructions and start annotating. We'll select the Skeleton tool from the toolbar and click on Shape to begin. In this case, we'll annotate from left to right, prioritizing people in the background first and then those closer to the camera. Let's create a skeleton for the first person. A key thing to remember is that left and right body parts are determined relative to the person, not the camera. The default skeleton is set up for annotating people facing the camera, meaning that what appears on the left of the screen corresponds to the right side of the person's body. However, the person we want to annotate is standing with his back to the camera. So, for convenience, it is better to position the skeleton so that the right points are closer to the right side of the person. We'll start placing the points, making sure to pin the skeleton first so that we don't accidentally move it. Each point should be as close as possible to the center of the body part. Now let's annotate the eyes and ears. The right eye is mostly hidden, making it difficult to place accurately, so we'll remove it using the outside property. We'll do the same for the left eye. A quick way to toggle the outside property is by using the hotkey O. We'll use this method moving forward. Next, we'll continue positioning the remaining points. The left shoulder is partially visible, so we'll estimate its center by placing the point slightly inward from the edge. The left wrist, however, is fully hidden behind the body, so we will remove this point. The left hip is also cropped, but we can still see enough of it to position the point correctly. Once all points are correctly placed, we need to add a bounding box around this person and group both elements together. We'll use the Group Shapes tool from the toolbar, click on the skeleton, then the bounding box, and press G to finalize the grouping. To confirm, we'll go to Appearance Settings and select Group Under Color by if both figures share the same color, it means they are grouped. Now let's move on to the next person. This one is mostly facing the camera, so we don't need to flip the skeleton. Right away, we'll remove the right eye and ear since they are not visible. The right shoulder is nearly fully hidden, making it difficult to determine the exact center, so we will skip this point. We'll continue positioning the other points except for right hip, which is also hidden by the body. Once done, we'll add a bounding box, check for accuracy, and group both elements. For the next person who is partially occluded, we'll need to remove many points from their skeleton, annotating only the visible body parts. Once that's done, we'll add a bounding box and group the elements.
The remaining people will be annotated using the same approach. We create a skeleton, position the points on visible body parts, remove the ones that are obstructed, add a bounding box, check the accuracy, and group the objects. After grouping, it's always a good idea to double-check that everything is linked correctly. We can do this by setting Color By to Group. If the bounding box and skeleton share the same color, the grouping is correct. Now that we've finished annotating the last person, let's do a final visual check. We'll turn on group color display to make sure everything is labeled correctly. If needed, we can adjust the color for better contrast. If everything meets the requirements, the annotation process is complete. In this video, we covered how to annotate skeletons, discussed the key rules, possible issues, and how to fix them. Careful annotation and following standards help create high quality data for AI training. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.